Hey guys, Andre here. Wanted to take a video uh, to show you guys how the PCV system works on this engine here. This is the 1.4 liter turbo turbo engine in the Chevrolet Cruze, the Chevrolet uh, Sonic, Chevy Trax, and the Buick Encore, I believe it was. There's a lot of misinformation about how the system works, so hopefully understanding the whole system and how it works should be able to uh, uh, help you diagnose any of the issues you're having with your engine and to resolve them right the first time instead of just throwing parts at it and wondering why it keeps failing. All right, so a bit of background information. PCV stands for positive crankcase ventilation. When you have uh, the combustion process inside your combustion chamber that pushes your pistons down and causes your engine to move forward, um, some of the PCV, I mean, so, sorry, some of the exhaust gas uh, comes out through the piston rings because you don't have a perfect seal. Most of it goes out the exhaust in the back of the tailpipe on your car. Now, when it goes past the piston rings into the crankcase, that gas has to go somewhere because it's uh, basically positive pressure that has to be um, evacuated somehow. And on turbo engines, there's uh, two paths for that, which I'm going to explain shortly here. So I'll walk you through where it starts and where it ends. So over here, if you look down, you've got your valve cover here at the top, the black thing and the silver aluminum piece right here, which goes a little further down. That's going to be your cylinder head. And there's an extrusion here that comes out a little bit. And that's basically where the PCV path goes. There's more areas than that, but this is one of the primary areas. Now the PCV gas will come up through the valve cover right here. And the valve cover actually serves two, two functions, one of which is a oil uh, oil separator. So it'll actually take the oil mist, the oil vapor out of the PCV gas and it'll uh, extract it and allow it to flow back into the engine while the PCV gas continues to flow. Now this has a chamber that goes all the way out through here, all the way around and all the way back over here to this little circle right here. This is what people call in some videos the PCV valve. Uh, it is not the PCV valve. In fact, it's not even one of the PCV valves. There's two, and this is not one of them. This is a vacuum regulator diaphragm. And the purpose of this is to regulate the amount of vacuum produced by the intake manifold when the engine is under vacuum conditions on the crank case. And so you don't want too much vacuum or too little. The ideal vacuum, according to GM, is between 11 and 18 inches of water. That's not inches of mercury, that's inches of water. It's important to know that. It's not a lot of vacuum. And this basically has a little rubber, rubber disc inside with a spring underneath it. Now, when the intake manifold here, which is connected through this PCV system, when the intake manifold produces vacuum when your engine is decelerating or when you're not producing much power or when you're just cruising, it basically will pull this... Um, diaphragm down and as it pulls it down it restricts how much you know gas can flow how much air can flow through it and uh, it won't close it completely but it'll basically limit the amount of flow so you maintain vacuum at between 11 and 18 inches of water now when this fails you'll generally hear a hissing noise in your engine bay and the hissing or suction whatever you want to call it and that's typically caused by the a rupture in the disc itself which causes this vent to start sucking in air now it's actually the vent the suction is coming from the intake manifold, which is why your idle is going to be all, you know, wonky. It's not going to idle right. It's going to idle a bit rough. And so, if you put your finger over here when this failure occurs, you'll notice your engine running differently, and you'll feel the air, you'll feel the air coming through it. And that's your first common failure point. Once it passes through here, it goes into the intake manifold underneath this connection here. Now, this is a corrugated hose with a connection that goes into the intake manifold. And at the bottom of this is a check valve or a PCV valve, as some would call it. Now, I have another intake manifold right here that I can show you basically all this, how all this works once this ambulance passes. So this is the intake manifold right here, and this one is actually good. So you'll see what it's supposed to look like when the whole system is working correctly. Now, once you get that corrugated hose off, you'll see this connection over here like this and you'll want to shine a flashlight down inside it and you'll want to look inside and see if there is a rubber nipple inside. Now to make this easier I'll shine it from the inside so you can see what this looks like. If you look down there you should be able to see that rubber nipple that I was talking about. Now to give you a better illustration about how this looks I'm going to shine a light inside it so you can see it from the other end. If you look down there you should see that rubber nipple with some uh, holes around it 
and behind it is basically a um, it's like a flap it's a circular disc it's another piece of rubber basically that's connected to that nipple and that's basically what your entire chuck valve is whatever what it, what it consists of now this is a very common failure and when this fails that check valve disappears so when you look inside when you use your flashlight to look inside that little hole you're going to be looking for that nipple and if you don't see it it might be dirty you're going to need some q-tips and some rubbing alcohol to clean that around and if you still don't see it after that well you got you have to address that issue first so i'll talk about how to how to address that issue you know a little later in this video so in any case when the intake again is under vacuum that check valve that's down there in the intake manifold opens and applies vacuum to the entire crankcase through the valve cover. Now, when the intake is under positive pressure or boost, when, you're, when your turbo is producing boost and you're accelerating or you're basically you know hauling, um, what happens is that intake manifold check valve closes and forces all the PCV gas to instead come up through here. Now this is a corrugated hose, it's made of nylon when you're removing this be careful not to break this because it is pretty brittle and it gets more brittle over time the gas will flow out through here out through the corrugated hose all the way around the valve cover and down over here to the turbo inlet and you'll see this little connection here at the end at the end of that connection is your second PCV check valve and basically what that does is it allows gas to flow into the turbo inlet but not out of it so when you have positive crankcase um, gas that you have to evacuate out of the crankcase and the check valve at the intake manifold is closed all the gas will come out through this right here and down into the intake um, I'm sorry down into the turbo inlet so that's basically how this all works now if you have one of these failures if your uh, you know if this diaphragm fails your only real option is to replace the enti entire uh, valve cover Fortunately, it's not very expensive. It's like 50 or 60 bucks from the dealer and I do recommend getting the dealer option not the aftermarket ones they, they seem to last a little longer even though they're all very unreliable at this point um, If your intake manifold check valve fails your solution is going to be a little more complicated Now your options are to either get an OEM uh, Intake manifold which is just gonna fail again. I have not heard any evidence that they've updated that design whatsoever in the last six years I am not crossing my fingers that they will fix it anytime soon and so you have to replace the entire intake manifold so you can replace it with an OEM one uh, Dorman has an updated intake manifold as well that they say is going to work better uh, but you know I'm gonna wait out and see if that's actually true since these intake manifolds typically fail after several years and that's not even been out what a year now let alone six months um, so that's your other option those generally go between 145 bucks and 165 ship depending on where you get it and how fast you want it the other option is a PCV fix kit that I designed last year a little over a year ago which basically reroutes the PCV gas externally underneath the intake manifold and my kit is $85 I've got a link for how the whole PCV system works about how my kit works and you know where to buy it down in the comments over here but I'll try to explain it on this spare intake manifold that I've got over here now if your intake manifold is bad you look inside your check valve is not there my PCV kit includes some hardware that you can use to plug up the hole that's inside there so basically you want a screwdriver through it and plug up the hole where the intake manifold used to be you then drill a hole right here which is really not as hard as it sounds with a, a step bit you basically drill a hole right here you run a few fittings together out through a basically a, a check valve that's going to be sitting right here and that check valve is heavily overbuilt it's designed to withstand like 400 psi when your engine's only going to produce between like 16 and 24 depending on depending on your modifications so it should last the entire life of the car and the check valve basically come out through here with the hose that goes right through here now i'll show it to you on my car because i've had this installed for a while and basically that's the hose that i'm talking about right here it comes all the way out and it connects to the brake booster connection right there. I'll pull the brake booster off so you can see what that looks like. That's the fitting that basically produces a uh, T connection into the brake booster connection. Now there's uh, no concerns whatsoever about the function of the brake booster since that is only vacuum and there's plenty of uh, flow capability there to allow the brake booster to continue functioning properly. Um, I've been able to lock up my brakes um, just slamming them uh, with uh, stability and traction control off so I know the brakes work fine and I put 
a few thousand miles on that kit and it's been working perfectly fine and I put many more miles on the kit before it. So that's basically um, how the whole PCV system works, how you fix it, how to diagnose it. Um, if you have any other questions about it, just uh, drop the questions in the comments. Check out the links that I posted uh, in the description and uh, let me know if you guys need anything else. And thanks for watching. Bye.